taken by this feeling baby we're invincible Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Knott's County. If you are enjoying the series, do drop a like on the video. It massively helps out the channel today with starting on Stern Irvine, which is a glorious name. Um, I mean, it says a lot about his personality. Amazingly balanced personality rather than super, well, I don't know, stern, for example. But yeah, he's actually done all right. Centre back, like admittedly, five heading and six tackling. He's not the best, but... Fair play to the lad. He has improved over the course of this year um, to the point where I think I nearly considered putting him on the bench, but he was unavailable. Uh, so he nearly got there just because of his training rating. So fair play to the guy. Now, today we've got an enormous match at home against Barnet and then away, I believe it's against Dagenham and Redbridge. This season is very much uh, taking its toll on me, it's fair to say. Also, I completely forgot that this was a 46 game uh, season now because I'm always used to the National League being 42 games. So I completely forgot about that. So I thought we were closer to the finish than we were. Um, so in fact, that lead is not quite so safe, I would say. Sign Cheeks at all costs. You could make a partnership of Booty and Cheeks. If we could find a guy called Clap, or something. That would be glorious. Or even, I don't know, Jimmy Twerks. Matt, surely the board will give me a good rating. The board. No, I don't think I will. <laughs> uh, I enjoy these a lot. If you've got any memes, drop them in the meme chat over in the Discord. That'll be awesome as well, since I know you can't comment stuff like that. Um, I'm enjoying these. And on a quick note, Alec decided to explain the Brexit thing to me, thankfully. It's not looking good for us. I've got to be honest. Apparently, according to this, it is going to be a real slog for us to actually sign any of the regions that I want to in this save. And that kind of Freaking sucks, to be honest. Um, so if anyone knows a way around that, that would be glorious. Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Woodwork County. Yeah, um, that does kind of sum up how things have gone. I feel like we've hit the woodwork an inordinate amount of times this year. I wouldn't mind going back and looking. Unfortunately, you can't see that as a stat um, other than in actually the match stats menu. You can't just see that... Um, overall in team stats i don't think it's not like listed in the uh, league one which is a shame because that'd be kind of cool to know because it would be too many christ on a bike t-shirt number three in the bag oh you must be new here oh christ on a bike has been a thing since 2015 um that was probably the first piece of merch i was gonna get made and again the merch thing it, it's gonna happen at some point um there was a thing i had in place and then that fell through so i'm still having to try and work on stuff in the background because i do want to get something like that sorted but i'm gonna have to try and make it all myself and handle all the distribution so because i want to keep the prices down essentially because a lot of those online print ones can be quite expensive also also, thank you for telling me that Boldvine uh, actually prefers his name to be pronounced Baldwin. A lot of people told me that it was pronounced Baldwin, and I was like, well, it clearly isn't, is it? Because he's Dutch. But apparently, the reason is because that's how he likes it pronounced, because obviously he's England, he's in England and all that. So that's kind of cool. Um, so yeah, we'll be calling him Baldwin from now on, because that just sounds great. Enzio Baldwin, love it. And a quick note, a few people have been asking me about the intro music now, because I know a lot of you really like it, and that's great. I know some of you don't, but what are you talking about? But yeah, the song's called We Are Invincible by Tim Hurst, in case you're interested in the full version. You can find it on YouTube. And as much as we like to talk about player rumours, because there's some more of those coming up soon, player chance. We had a load of great chance for Stockport, so if you've got any ideas for chance for the players, let me know. Drop them in the comments. I'll be happy to read slash sing them out. If anything comes even close to Scott Duxbury's Marching Brass Club Band, then you win an award, my friend. Right, we've had a couple of games off camera. <sighs> You'll see. So straight off the back of that result against Hartlepool, hey, would you believe it? We lost the next game. It's almost as if it's impossible to win after you've just lost a match. It seems that, like, I mean, this is insane. The only, the chance was a penalty. We even saved the penalty, but unfortunately they put in the rebound. Ah, just, I don't know what to say. 12 shots on target in this match, not a single goal. We could not just, we just could not score. And it took a penalty for them to beat us. And that just seems to be how it is. It does seem like if we lose a game, we are basically guaranteed to lose the next game no matter what happens and um, the only time that didn't happen is when we came up against uh, one of the relegation basically sides in the next match and were able to squeak a win over them and it is so frustrating it does seem like one win uh, one defeat basically guarantees a defeat in the next match as well and there we go losing to mid-table struggling boreham wood but I could have predicted that before the match, unfortunately. Booty was still excellent one man of the match. Of course he did. And then in the next game away at Torquay, I would say we arguably played worse in this match and yet came out with a 2-0 victory. Matt O'Reilly basically bailed us out. One thunderous volley, that not from too far out, but just from just inside the area, hit the crossbar, went in, and the second one, Booty slipped it to him, and there he goes, thunders one in. So Matt O'Reilly's basically bailed us out on the night there with two excellent strikes. He's under 14 goals this year. And he really is useful to come up with that sort of stuff. Talky weren't amazing. Um, they had some decent number of key passes, though, I would, it would be fair to say. But we played better in this game than we did against Boreham Wood and yet came out on the winning side against a much better team. 
But on the plus side, getting this win now before the Barnet game hopefully means that I hope this will apply the other way, where you get a, a, an unfortunate win, uh, perhaps. And maybe that leads into some good form because we need to beat Barnet today. It is absolutely imperative because the league looks like this. At the moment, we are currently nine clear of Barnet. They do have a game in hand on us. But if we were to win this game today, we could make that a really, really tough sell for them to catch us up. Chesterfield, on the other hand, have been able to win some matches, unfortunately. Um, I think they did drop some points. I'm not even sure what they did, actually, to be honest. They're five points behind us with the same number of games played. It has been a very, very tough season for us. And the fact that after 35 games, we're on 78 points. That's well over two points a game. We're still on for well over 100 points this year. And we're not even close to being safe in where we are in the league at the moment. It's... um. Quite the season. A lot of people talked about how much of a slog this league is, and I fully agree. We're going to need some inordinate amount of um, wins. we just got to keep on plugging away, really. Um, that game against Chesterfield, away from home later, and probably in the next episode, is going to be an absolutely crucial one. But Barnet today, I think if we win against Barnet, we'll probably just about start to say we're probably going to finish above them. But we'll see. In addition to that, we actually got to the FA Youth Cup semi-finals. The game hasn't actually been played yet, so we could even go further. And that's a hell of an achievement. Some of you might have seen him in the squad, actually. This is Antoine Semenyo, who's coming on loan from, I think it's Bristol City, for free. He's literally, we're not paying any of his wages. And he is a really solid right-sided winger. He can play up front, he can play on the left. And when the opportunity came up to get this guy on a free... I mean, not on a free, you know what I mean? On a free loan for the rest of the season. I jumped at it. He's not been amazing in the first two games he's played for us so far, but I think once he settles in, he's definitely going to be able to give us something on that right-hand side or in the frontward position in case anything happens to Wes Thomas. I think it's just boosted us that little tiny bit. And once he gets up to full speed with us, I think there's a lot of things to like about this lad. So for free, you can't really argue with that, can you? But unfortunately, we have got to rotate because it's getting very, very um, awkward here. So McCrory's going to have to come out, which means Muscat still isn't available. I don't want to be playing booty there, which means Declan Dunn, the youngster, is going to be making, I think this might be his first ever start. Maybe not. I might just leave. Oh, hang on. We might be able to get Brindley back on the bench. So that'll be the bench. Rose, Turner, Sousa, or Sosa, um, Walker, and Brindley. That's fine. Avenge, right. It's nice to have an Avenge one available. I might actually just leave it at that, because often when I go too positive against teams, they'll, it will sort of dissuade them and make them happy instead of motivated. Right then, lads, come on. Let's get ourselves a home win against Barnet. Maybe Semenya will finally have the sort of first real noticeably decent game for us. In the first two games, it's not been great. Go on. Early goal would be brilliant. And it's cleared away. That's annoying. But Booty's definitely got that delivery in him. And they've taken a bit too long over it, and Bird has done well to get back. De oh, Thomas is in! Yes! Wes Thomas inside a minute. Notts County 1, Barnet nil. Wes Thomas is 18th of the year. The top scorer in the division, after all. And Declan Dunn, really, really nice ball. That's not the type of goal that we score very often. Pierce Bird does amazingly well. But this is a sensational little ball through from Declan Dunn. The defender, it's a great first touch from Wes Thomas as well to get across the defender. And we lead already. We've got the lead already. This will be massive. I don't feel like that can represent how well we played so far. And oh, it's... Oh, my God. Thomas has hit the crossbar. They've got a lot of the ball against us, surprisingly. We might have to turn down the possession a little... Uh, turn down the passing directness a little more so we can hold on to the ball a bit better. Booty. Oh, that's not good. That's a really poor pass from Booty. And I think they might get in behind us here. Unless... Oh! Very nearly won the ball off them. And again, we're just standing off a little too much for my liking. They'll hit... Around the side for Fonguk. Surely gone too deep. Yep. Still managed to get a shot away, actually, though, surprisingly. The only thing I can think of is to just engage them a little bit. I don't want to go too... I don't want to press up too high, though. I might just press them a little bit higher. Because, to be honest, Barnett have probably been the better side in this match so far. Semenyo. Over the top, Thomas. If he can get a good first touch, which he has. Where's Thomas? He's got no support, though. He's going to have to go alone here, which he will. Oh, and he's hit into the side netting. Decent chance for us, really. I mean, I can't pretend that we've been good in this match so far. We took the lead. Uh, oh, my God. There's four of him. Are... If we concede from this... How did he win the ball with four of our players there and not one of them thought to try and put a tackle in? This is almost like the reversal of the game we played against them in the away match. Which means, I will take it, if we get a lucky win against them, I guess that will balance things out from the first game against them. But, oh dear, that is a very undeserved lead we're in. We've had one shot on target. We don't want to be marking Vilhet, do we? That doesn't seem like a smart plan. But we will mark uh, Kayla Dunn. Well, actually, since we can't win the ball very much, I'm going to up the passing directness a tiny little bit because I feel like we might be able to get some balls in behind. That might be our best course of action. Marking up their key players a little bit better in the second half and playing a slightly more direct style of football because we're not getting enough of the football to play our standard tiki-taka style, if you can call it that. Although, I do feel like if they were to equalise, it would be completely fair. And there it is with Elliot Johnson. Um, can't really argue with it. They've been the better side on the night and we were fortunate to be in front. But why are we so bad all of a sudden? It's like the Hartlepool games just ruined us. We were fortunate to win against Torquay. I thought we cleared the danger here, but Johnson, yeah, that's unfortunate. Booty. He's not going to score, is he? Oh, he's... Hit the woodwork. To be, to be shocked 
is to... Thomas! Well, we've hit the woodwork for a second time on the night. <laughs> oh, God. <sighs> and that's all of our subs, and now we don't have a right winger. <laughs> that's why you don't make three subs at the same time, I'll admit. But... Ah, uh, great. Well, we're now go we're guaranteeing ourselves to not win this match now, aren't we? Unfortunately, Thomas and Walker penalty. No, I mean hard tackle. I'm sorry, I didn't even see a tackle. If we take the lead here, then insanity. Mitch Rose, he scored a lot of pens this year, and he has scored it. Not County two, Barnet one. Mitch Rose out of absolutely nowhere, we find ourselves in front. I actually think we've been a lot better in this second period of the match, ironically, considering we conceded a goal in the second period. We've definitely turned it on a bit, but that is completely strange for the second period, for the rest of this half. If we can get away with this, which I don't think we will, then this would be insanity. Um, Come on, lads. Don't concede from a corner, at least. Oh, for God's sake. Well, there we go. Not County. Immediately they get a goal from a corner. That seems to be one of the few ways that we actually can see goals. Set pieces. And I'm training the crap out of defending set pieces. He's just smashed it straight there. People just can't get near him. On the balance of chance creation, you could probably make an argument that we've had the better opportunities somehow. But that doesn't mean a great... Oh, God, no. That's a free kick. Uh, that looks like it's going to be it. Notts County 2, Barnet 2. To be fair, after going down to 10 men... Um, to actually score that penalty, I suppose there's an element of luck there. I think we were all right. We actually created some opportunities. We were much better in the second half. The first half, we were awful and did not deserve to be in front. But we definitely turned things on a bit in the second period. I guess we haven't lost ground. They've, they've not gained anything on us by that result. But it's a frustrating one, nevertheless. Hopefully, that doesn't kill the confidence completely going into Dagenham and Redbridge. But there's not a lot of time off camera in between. So this is going to be really difficult. Not great. So with that in mind, it's going to have to be Sosa's coming back in again. Um... Sousa, yeah, he, he, or Sosa. Sosa? I think it's Sosa. Um, or as I like to call him, Eric O'Salsa. Um, so that, that's that. Milan Bars is back in training again, so we might get some football out of him before the season is over. Best performing midfielder on our sort of training setup is actually Emilio Stavrou, so I'm going to put him on the bench today. I just simply do not see them pulling this out. I think we need to... Uh, the lucky wins don't seem to count. It needs to be a good win against a poor side. Seems to be the only way to get the morale to go back again. It doesn't seem to work the other way around, where you moment you get a, a win, it just puts you back on the right track. It only seems to work one way. And this applies to AI teams too. The moment they get one defeat, suddenly that's why Sheffield, uh, Chesterfield dropped away at one point. They have to come up with something to show me that they want to win this league. Because at the moment, there is a potential that Chesterfield could go back to level on points with us, I think. Potentially. If we lose and they win, and then they win their game in hand. And Barnet lead filed. Not a huge shock there. Ball in. And Oliver puts it in the back of the net. Dagenham and Redbridge nil. Notts County won. Charlie Oliver's fourth of the year. And that is massive. Gives us the lead. We've got a lot of... This is what we really, really needed. Booty with an absolutely brilliant cross. And Charlie Oliver, what a header that is. This is the game that we're, they decide whether they're going to win the league or not, I feel like. If we can come here and win. I know it's a, a poor sort of mid-table side, but the way we've been playing lately, you just don't know, do you? A second goal, though, would make me feel so much more confident in our performance so far. Because we've not exactly scintillated so far, but the possession is very good. How about for Tyson? Oh, he's probably got enough room to get across in here. He does. Thomas with the header. The rest of this half has quite literally gone past without any highlights. Um, but what I would say, though, is that Barnet have been equalised against by Fylde, and Chesterfield are leading in their game, so there's a lot on the line now. Uh, really, starting to just sort of split away there, Chesterfield. Unless Sosa can find a cross, he's, he's put it back for Thomas and it's 2-0! Where's Thomas? I'll tell you what, right? Eric Sosa there, that is some sensational wing play. For once, he didn't hit the side netting. He's done more in 45 minutes of this match than Semenyo did in like his three matches for us. This is brilliant. Lovely ball back across. And Wes Thomas, 19 goals this year, makes it 2-0 before half time. That could be massive. We're always capable of throwing away those one goal leads, but at 2-0 up, that is so important for us. Chesterfield lead from the penalty spot. Barnett are at one all right now. And Aldershot are actually potentially going into second, uh, third spot here. Dagenham are not committing many fouls, and that might be why we're winning so much of the ball. And also, Oliver. Oh, what a save. He's hit the inside of the post, I think. Wait, what the hell happened there? The highlight just literally started with their player being through on goal. So I hate that because that's a really good opportunity. What I would say, though, is when that happens, I've never seen one actually be scored. So that seems to indicate that those never get put in. Oliver, O'Reilly again, though. Can he find something a bit better this time? Booty, Walker. Oh, no. <sighs> what do we have to do? I mean, thank God for the two-goal lead, but... Oh, just a tackle, essentially. It's just lump one over the top. It's a great finish from Quigley. Can't argue with the finish. But what are we doing? Come on. And we have actually been really solid tonight. But 
heck, if we have to get out of here with a 2-1 victory and it sets us back on the path again, because I think we've been pretty decent, then I will take that, I suppose. But there's still time left in this game for all sorts to happen, unfortunately. Walker, O'Reilly, a bit more space for us now on this right-hand side. Sosa, he's got an overlap coming. He's found Brindley. He's got to put a ball in. Does. Cleared. O'Reilly, this is his bread and butter and it's wide. Let's let's try it. Let's try and see if we can just hang on for three minutes playing defensive football. Get out here with the victory. Oh, dearie me. Dagenham and Rubbridge 1, Notts County 2. We've got the win in the end, but my God, that was a, a squeaky ending that was very unnecessary from us. We had opportunities before that to put the game to bed. Fair play to them, though. They, they fought back hard, but we got the win and maybe that is the one that could potentially be the catalyst. We definitely looked a lot better in this. Then again, we looked good against Boreham Wood and still lost, so there you go. I still see that as a huge victory for us because it puts us back to being six points clear. It moves us to 10 points clear of Aldershot as well, which uh, is basically between us and Chesterfield, it would look like at the moment. But we're still plugging away there, winning matches. Just, oh dear. And next episode, well, you know what it's going to be. It's going to be Chesterfield away from home. Uh, that is crucial. I think if we can avoid defeat there, that could be the biggest moment in this save so far. And then Maidenhead at home after that is a must-win home game. That's basically a nailed-on three points that we have to get. So, if you've enjoyed this episode, it's not a bad result, really. A two-all draw with Barnet and then a win away from home. It's four points on the board. It's reasonable, actually. The form is okay. Drop a like on the video. That'd be gorgeous. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe. That'd be phenomenal as well. And I'll join you guys in the next episode for the biggest episode of the save. Away at Chesterfield. It's the title clash of the century. Or certainly of the last week. Uh, that, yeah, join me then. I'll see you guys soon. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.